Good morning, everybody. Let me add my welcome to the 2018th edition of USITT's annual conference and stage expo here in Fort Lauderdale. This marks my third and final conference as your president, and I want to begin by expressing my appreciation to all of you who have granted me this extraordinary opportunity to lead this remarkable organization. I've had the opportunity to serve you, the members of USITT, and I hope in the time that I've been in the chair at the head of the table, we have continued to grow as a vital resource for networking and education, research, and service to the live entertainment industry. I also want to give a special thanks to my wife, Ginny, who's here this week, who made it all possible for the last three years. The mission of USITT is to connect the performing arts, design, and technology community to ensure vibrant dialogue among practitioners, educators, and students. Let that mission roll around in your head for just a minute. And please keep that idea of community central to your engagement for the balance of this week. Some key words that jump out to me are community and vibrant dialogue. And in this past year, our community has faced challenges that we never imagined we would face. And the need for vibrant dialogue is even more critical. On the night of October 1st, 2017, a gunman opened fire on a crowd of concert goers at the Route 91 Harvest Music Festival on the Las Vegas Strip in Nevada, leaving 58 people dead and 851 injured. Members of this organization were working and attending that event. They were working in productions in nearby Las Vegas venues, and there are most certainly people in attendance here today at this conference who were directly impacted by that heinous act. What is an appropriate response? Well, as an institute at this conference, we're offering a session entitled Situational Awareness, Planning, and Process for Active Shooter and Armed Aggressor Scenarios. We've brought in experts in the field on this topic for which there is not a chapter in your old Burris Myron Cole, or Gillette, or Wolf and Block. What unfortunately has become essential training for us in the entertainment industry is now being provided by USITT. But what is an appropriate response? Today our conference starts less than 30 miles away from the site of the most recent mass school shooting in our country. While this act of horror has affected all of us, this week you may well encounter someone either attending this conference or working at the convention center or at the hotel or on the many buses transporting us around who attended a funeral for one of the more than 17 people who were killed. All of us struggle to make sense of this senseless act and determine how can we move forward? What is an appropriate response? Well, as an institute, we reached out to the students, faculty, and staff at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, and we offered them free conference registration. We have joined in an effort started by our other brothers and sisters in theater to share theater memorabilia to make the school more welcoming. We've sent them USITT publications and branded items to help welcome them back. We've begun talks about what ed additional education and training programming that the Institute might be able to offer in the future. But what is an appropriate response? This very day, the Women's March Youth Empower Organization has called for a national school walkout for 17 minutes starting at 10 a.m. One minute of silence and group response to reflect that each one of the lives of the 17 lost in the senseless killing spree and to call attention 
to needed action by those in power to address the issues of safety in our schools and in our society in general. What is an appropriate response? On March 24th, survivors of the February 14th shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School and other students are planning a protest in Washington, D.C. called the March for Our Lives. Sister marches are anticipated to take place in other cities around the world. What is an appropriate response? On April 20th, the 19th anniversary of the massacre at Columbine High School in Colorado, a nationwide walkout of schools titled by some the No Kids Left event, protesting historic inaction to date and demanding new action is urging parents to keep their children out of school for the entire day. What is an appropriate response? Today, at 10 a.m., our stage manager for the morning, this morning's keynote, will call hold, please. At that time, we're going to take a pause in our conference schedule to honor all those lives lost to violence and senseless acts in the last 12 months. When the hold is called, I would ask all who wish to and are able to, to stand for a few moments of silence until thank you is called. Following this shared act, our regular conference program will resume. An appropriate response? I don't know. I just don't know. But a necessary action, given the bonds of this community, of USITT, and our basic humanity. Each of us as an individual is called to make a choice as to how to respond to the events around us. And as an institute, we're called to embrace our community even more strongly than we have ever done in the past. To continue to, continue to offer a forum for vibrant dialogue and to offer quality education and training, not only how to prepare for such tragedies, but how to deal with the aftermath of such an event. And maybe also to work to prevent any other violent act of this type. We need to support the vibrant dialogue regarding issues of equity, equality, diversity, cultural understanding and safety in our programs and interactions with each other throughout this week. I, I struggle to find a personal way to appropriately respond to the tragedies that I've spoken of, but I do celebrate the fact that we here, this week, working together to improve our industry, to make it stronger connections with each other, working together to understand the diversity in our membership, and simply working together to make our world a better place. 